What's going on YouTube? Today I'm going to teach you one of my favorite tricks in photography. Today we are at Independence Oaks in Clarkston, Michigan, and I'm going to show you how to take control of your light temperature so that you can create even more dynamic portraiture in the shade. As we all know, shade is one of our favorite places to kind of lead people in photography. We, we really like the shade because of the soft, balanced light that it provides. However, it provides a little bit of a difficulty because the color temperature of shade is actually vastly different from the color temperature of daylight. Now our flash products are all balanced for daylight. So they're at around 5500 Kelvin, which is great when you're using the sun as a secondary light source or other 5500 Kelvin balanced lighting. However, once we're in the shade, that completely changes and it can actually cause a lot of problems in the images. So right now we've got this camera at 5500 Kelvin and as you can see everything is very very blue but when we bump it up to the actual value of shade somewhere more around 6200 all the way up to 6700 now I look a lot more properly balanced while the highlights on the ground are going to be much warmer. So I'm going to show you how to eliminate that discrepancy and actually get a really cool effect and even change the look of the entire image when you're working in the shade with lighting equipment. We've got Jake in front of my Yongnuo YN360, which is, at the moment, powered at 5500 Kelvin temperature. We've also got the white balance of the camera at 5500 Kelvin. Now, if you look closely at the part of his shirt that's being illuminated by the YN360, you can see the difference between the highlight and the shadow. It is a very crisp white. If you look at the shadow side, it's a cooler tone. It's much more blue and it actually doesn't balance at all. This is a problem that we're constantly facing when we're shooting in mixed lighting sources or if we're using flash while shooting in the shady environment. Okay, now I have increased the white balance of both of the cameras to 7100 Kelvin. Now, as you can see, the shadow side is actually much cleaner. We got rid of a lot of that blue. However, if we're looking at the part that is being hit by the daylight balance light source, which is that young new LED again, we can see that now that has a little bit more of a red tint to it. There's one really easy way to solve this. So I'm gonna go grab my Godox 8600s out of the car and we're gonna use that to take a few portraits of Jake here. I'm gonna show you guys the difference from using it just balanced at 5500 to gelling it so that we actually have to compensate using inverse color theory and that's gonna give us a much more balanced look with the shade. And it's also gonna change some characteristics of the background. And so I really want you to see how it's gonna change the look of the portraits. And it's gonna give you some much cleaner results overall. All right guys, I just want you to see how I've got my gel affixed to my mono light. So traditionally with the speed light, it's a lot easier. You just lay it in front and use some sort of device to secure it to the sides. Uh, with the mono light, it's a little bit different because we're using an omnidirectional bulb. Typically I'm using rubber bands and I've just actually started purchasing silicone rubber bands. Unfortunately, they're not here yet. Those silicone rubber bands are gonna allow me to not have to worry about like the heat transmission. Basically all I did, I cut a piece of half CTB. I've also got quarter and I've also got full, but I'm using in this instance half CTB, just enough to go around the entire bulb. Obviously we still got that front open, but that's not really a huge issue because it's an omnidirectional bulb, so light's going everywhere and a majority of our light is actually going to be turned into that blue color. And if you guys haven't watched my other videos, I'm actually using the Godex 8600BM, which I highly, highly recommend. I absolutely love this light and the entire Godex system. So this is kind of how we're setting it up for today, but there's plenty of different ways that you can gel it. You could actually gel your actual modifier. Um, that's pretty much it. There's only two ways to do this. This is my favorite environment to use the half CTB gel on. Uh, basically what's going on here, we've got Jake in complete shade. As you can see, he is shade, everything. All our sunlight is behind him, but that still gives a little bit of highlights on his left side because he's standing in that pool of sunlight. The reason this is one of my favorite ways to shoot this is because once we increase the color temperature of our light and have to do that warming balance to compensate for the blue of the light, we're gonna see the daylight that was originally white shift up to a much warmer oranger tone. So 
I'm gonna show you guys here what I mean. Let's bring like one arm kind of on the, yeah, yeah, just like that, perfect. Turn your nose just a little bit more this way. And a little angle, yep, yep. It's fucking tight. So I got a few images that I wanna share with you guys. Um, I'm gonna show you kind of, see how red that lighting is on his left side? That's where the sunlight's hitting him. Now, I'm gonna show you what happens as soon as we take away the CTB on this. So now I know that we took off the CTB, which means a couple things. It means that our white balance is gonna shift from 7100, which is what I've been using with that half CTB, all the way down to about 5500. The other thing that's gonna happen is we're going to gain a little bit of light because every type of gel has some degree of light loss, whether it's like a third of a stop or two stops, sometimes when you get with bigger gels. I'm going to decrease the power just a little bit to compensate for that. And I'm gonna show you guys how much this image is gonna change. So as you guys can see, we've still got pretty much the same look on our subject. However, our background, our greens especially, are a way, way more aqua tone. And we don't have that beautiful orangish haze coming in on the shoulder. It's very balanced. It's very white and kind of, kind of boring. So that's kind of exactly what this CTB gel is for, is balancing with the shade and also shifting the color that we're getting from the sun. We are in our next spot and I just wanna show you basically what's gonna happen with our color temperature again. So this is a daylight balance. And as you can see, our daylight looks pretty clean, but there is that little bit of aqua tone in the back. But once we pump it up to about 7,000, boom, everything explodes. So everything is way more gold and we're getting a way cooler tone out of this now. Okay, so this has a lot more daylight in the scene, um, but it's still gonna give us a really cool effect. This one's about to look sexy. Huh? Sexually. <laughs> okay, so for these first couple of shots, we're gonna go daylight white balance and see how that one looks. Knees to the right. Come into that knee a little bit more. Even more, man. Yeah. Do something different than your legs. Like, try crossing it for me. Try crossing one. Like, up like the 90 yeah yeah now bring yeah now kind of like lean into that right one just a little bit yeah yeah there we go all right so we got some cool ones with uh daylight balance now we're gonna put that ctb back on and check out the difference got it it's not there you go perfect dude it's tight Okay, so we got the CTB on. Now we're gonna go back up to 7100 and see what we get. Yeah, let's go back to that pose for sure. Good lord, my friend. It's beautiful. It's like, you're like bad boy Jesus right now. That shoulder's way too stiff. Do you want to see one? Yeah. I am a sexy man. Right there. Perfect. So you've seen that technique in shade. Now that's not the only place that it's useful. You can also use a CTB uh, in a completely daylight environment to completely change the look of the background that's being hit by that daylight. The same thing is gonna happen that was happening with our backlights in the previous instances, except this time it's gonna apply to our whole scene. So rather than being daylight balanced, we're gonna shift this whole background of daylight field 
and get a really, really moody, red, sunsetty kind of vibe. Let's get it cracking. You guys will probably see right on his nose, I'm gonna zoom in a bit. You see that kind of highlight right there on his nose? I'm actually gonna try to keep that because I want to get that red vibe. Chin up and like looking up a little bit more, uh, but still in that direction, like back at the other camera, yeah. We're gonna do one more quick comparison, get the daylight, show you guys what that looks like in this final shot. Actually, real quick, let's go no flash for one. Yawn. This is one of my least favorite things about using uh, the back to the sun technique or side to the sun is that the entire subject's face now is in shade, which is at 6,500 or even upwards depending on the rest of the light. But we're gonna be lighting him with 5,500. Now the problem that's gonna create, I'm gonna take one quick shot here just so you guys can see it. Now, I'll put this shot up. The problem that that's going to lead to is that we have a daylight balanced light source for the lit side of his face. However, as we're transitioning into the shadow side of his face, not only are we transitioning the amount of light into those shadows, but the color is changing and we're getting blue skin tones. And we really don't want blue skin tones because it just kind of makes the skin look a little bit dead, a little bit gross. Turn this back this way. Perfect. I think this will illustrate really well what happens when we're using 5500 Kelvin light and we've got a shade side of the subject. All right guys, so I hope that this helped you out or at least gave you another idea to try out and go and put into your outdoor photography, especially your single light photography. Now you can take this as far as you want. You can use a full CTB and get even more yellow backgrounds. Uh, you can also take this a complete other way if it fits your style more and use a CTO gel to actually make your light more orange. Now commonly that's something that we would do like inside a church to balance with tungsten lighting. However, it's no rules in photography. So if you wanted to bring it out here and just get like a wildly blue background, that's something that you can implement into your style. All right, guys, best of luck with this technique. If you use it, if you try it out, I'd love to see what you come up with. Go ahead and link in the comments an image that you created with this. And beyond that, if you like the video, please hit the like button, subscribe for more, and let me know what you guys want to see in the future. All right, take it easy, YouTube.